So, are you guys wondering how to achieve nice looking countertops for next to nothing? <laughs> On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to achieve custom marble countertops without the marble. Um, and the, way, the way that they were doing that in this kitchen is we're using a product by Formica called Calicutta Marble. And I'll show you guys, I did this section over here. And it turned out really nice. And the way that we did that was with this new product that Formica has now. It's called Ideal Edge. And it really looks nice. And this is a satin finish. They uh, sell it in two different styles of finishes. One's called etched and one's a satin. The satin's a little smoother and uh, doesn't have any little pockets in it, whereas the etched has some little pockets in it and it's kind of shiny. In the past, we've used Formica before in our houses and we've always used the etched finish and it seemed more durable than this satin that we chose for this kitchen. Um, this definitely looks better, but um, I don't think it's going to be as durable. I think it shows dirt and uh, scratches and stuff a lot easier than the etch finish does. So if I was going to do this again, I'd probably go with the etched finish. Whereas we use the satin finish here. And I don't know if the lighting's good enough to see, but it's a very dull, almost like a honed marble finish um, with the satin. And here's where the ideal edge meets the countertop and it's really hard to see that there's a seam there um, at first there was evidence of a seam and we put some white putty on the seam and it definitely helps to blend it and there's some yellow hues to this countertop too so that helped to make things look nice so this is the part I've already completed, this little L shape. And we were able to pick up all these materials for just under a thousand. And it's just a little bit of labor to build the countertops up and install this for mica. So I am gonna put the camera on the tripod and show you guys how I do this area. I'm gonna build this countertop and then uh, I'm gonna show you how to do this area as well. We got to add another new top to this because I messed up on this one. So I'm going to show you guys how I glue that down and then how we install the ideal edge around the whole perimeter. And we'll get a custom marble finish for next to nothing. So ideally on this kitchen we would have liked to have installed quartz, but we're also trying to do this on a budget because we don't live in the nicest neighborhood. <laughs> So like I said, um, we're very practical and we're able to achieve a nice looking countertop on a budget. So enjoy the video. All right, so I'm gonna start prepping this countertop that goes here. Um, I've already built the countertop. The way I did that was I glued some three quarter inch particle board to half inch strips that lined up with these IKEA um, countertop mounting brackets. And when I initially ordered this ideal edge, it came in inch and a half and inch and three quarters, I think. Actually, I can't remember. <laughs> um, so initially when I ordered the ideal edge, I thought it was going to be inch and a quarter and that's why I went with a three quarter inch particle board mounted over half inch. But turns out the different profiles that they sell on ideal edge only come in certain thicknesses. So um, with the profile that we did, the radius edge, double radius edge, it only came in an inch and a half. So I had to add a quarter inch of plywood to the top here. And then I mounted some trim to the front just to create a nice even inch and a half because I built it up with a bunch of different layers. So 
um, to have a nice edge to glue to. I mounted that to the countertop and then I puttied all the seams. So I'm gonna start sanding this, getting it ready for glue and so we can get the countertop glued down. Don't forget when you're working in a finished house to use dust extraction. Okay, so when I glue up that little countertop, I want to glue this one up at the same time, so I'm going to prep these edges too now. All right, so what I did there was I just scuffed up the surface of the old Formica that I messed up. Well, I should say new Formica um, in order for the glue to have a nice rough surface to stick to. Um, the more you can scuff up a surface, the better whenever you're gluing stuff. So what we'll do now is we'll get the Formica out of the garage. We'll cut it a little bit bigger than the areas that we need. For this countertop here and this one and I'll show you guys how I glue uh, all the countertops down. All right, so the most important thing you need to do before you glue everything is make sure the Formica is nice and clean. Um, any little speck of dust or um, debris is gonna show through your finished product. So before you put the glue down, make sure it's clean and smooth. I did that on this piece. I've got it flipped upside down on top of the counter. Uh, what I'll do is I'll glue this one. Same with this one over here, this little counter. I'll glue the two top Formica pieces. I'll set them aside and then we'll clean off the surface below and we'll put glue on both sides of everything. So I'm gonna get the, the glue out and I'll show you guys how we glue these up. So you can't really see, but this is a water-based adhesive for countertops. You can get it at supply stores. Um, this one is Wilson Art. Um, 
And the reason why I like to use H water-based products, H2O, is they don't smell as bad as contact cement. So make sure you shake it up real good. Get a nice coarse roller. Maybe open up a window or two just to be safe. Put a little more glue on this one because it's more coarse of a surface so uh, it tends to soak up the glue a little bit more so I'm going to put a little extra on this. I put too much glue so I'm going to use some of this on the other piece of Formica. Okay, so we got everything glued up. Um, hopefully you guys can see there's some whiteness to the glue when it first goes on as it dries. It starts to look like this and it's kind of dry to the touch. So that's what we're looking for on everything. It's harder to see on lighter colored surfaces, but that's still wet. I got way too much glue on that piece, so that's gonna take a little while to dry. This is all glued up. Like I said, the lighter the color is, the harder it is to see it drying. And then over here on this piece, I've got it draped over my couch. It's a really big piece of Formica. So you wanna make sure you don't put it down on anything that might have dust or dirt on it. The floor was a little too dirty in my opinion. So I put it over my couch here. You can see here it's a lot drier than this area here, so got a ceiling fan blowing on it once everything's dry then we can lay some dowels down on the counter and uh, dry fit the piece on top of the dowels so it doesn't stick with the glue you can kind of move it around and pull the dowels out to get it stuck so we'll let this stuff dry and take a little break Okay guys, so real quick, I want to show you, um, the Formica likes to dry really, really fast. So if you, if you kind of rub your hand on it, it's, it's got like a good coat of glue and it's not wet. When you touch it, nothing really sticks, your hand doesn't stick. But different surfaces tend to dry a little bit differently so this counter here still a little tacky when you put your hand on it it's kind of sticky so it's not quite ready and then here on this one it's still a little sticky too and then it's kind of like paint if you've got some different surfaces like we have some putty here 
you if you don't wait long enough and you touch that kind of stuff it doesn't even adhere to those surfaces so you gotta really wait and let that dry otherwise your formica won't stick to that so don't rush it while we're being patient where your corners come together you want to make sure those are nice and smooth I know earlier you guys saw me sanding I didn't really explain this but as your router runs across this front edge here you want to make sure this is smooth as possible so I like to putty any transitions just to make sure those things are nice and smooth I got a little bit of Bondo and some wood filler because if your router touches anything that's uneven it's going to translate to the top of your surface and cut a nice little notch in it if you don't have that nice and smooth so just a pro tip something to keep in mind Okay, so what I did there was I put some dowels down and we kind of put the laminate down like a sticker. I don't know if you guys have ever put a sticker on anything, but you kind of start from the middle and work your way out depending on the size of the sticker. On um, this one, I started on the end and just worked my way this way. And our goal is to not create any air pockets or creases in the laminate because once that glue touches the other glue it's done it's stuck you're not getting that off so you got to be really careful and then after you get it all flattened out um, you just kind of roll it out with the roller I'm sure you guys saw me rolling it out just trying to get rid of any air pockets and flatten this thing out as much as we can and then I go around the edges and I kind of hammer them down just to make sure the glue is adhered on, around the edges with the rubber mallet. Um, just because I don't like to roll along the edge because I don't want it because of, of the overhang I don't want to roll too hard and break this which would ruin the top of our surface so I carefully run my finger under and tap it with the rubber mallet. That way I know right where I need to tap it and I don't break it so now we're gonna get the router going we're gonna trim the edges of our trim the excesses off of our Formica then we'll be ready for then we'll be ready for the ideal edge all right guys so this is the router we're gonna be using uh, hold on one second my dog's barking All right, sorry, I had to let my dog outside. Anyways, this is a flush bit router. It's got a little bearing that follows the self edge on the counter. And then the 
flush bit trims the Formica flush with the edge below. So um, there's a couple things to be careful about when you're using these. Um, you want to make sure there's nothing that the bearing's going to roll over to create an indent because it's going to follow that indentation and ruin the top of your counter. So you want to make sure you set the depth properly onto a smooth part all the way around your countertop. So I've already kind of accounted for that and filled any voids that I had from my nail gun down here so that the bearing will follow a nice smooth surface all the way around the counter and cut a nice square top. Another note, um, counterclockwise is usually the way I like to go. The way that the bit spins is you want to go counterclockwise so that you're cutting against the direction of the route that you're going to make it easier and the router has less of a chance to kind of grab and take off on you. Gotta let my dogs back in. Alright, so after you router, you've got yourself quite a big mess, uh, but you can see cuts it nice and smooth along the edge here. And as long as you don't have any imperfections on this edge, this will turn out nice and straight. Super sharp, though, be really careful. You can see we've flush trimmed it all the way around the counter. And the smoother we can get this edge, the better our edge is going to look when we put on the front part. What's it called? Ideal edge. So I'm going to clean up my mess here, do a little bit of filing just to kind of flatten things out. And then we'll cut our ideal edge and glue it on. So my audio went out, um, but basically just want to remind you guys that this stuff is sharp. Um, this is what it looks like before you cut it. This is the ideal edge and the top edge is really sharp as you can see by the band-aids on my fingers. Um, so you want to be really careful with this top edge when you're cutting it, working with it. Um, it's like a razor knife. So I just want to show you guys what it looks like. This is the countertop we need to install it on from here to here. I got round corners in my house, so got a little bit of an angle here. Um, so you want to make sure you count for that to make it look nice and kind of wrap around that corner. I'm going to go with a 22 and a half degree angle there. And yeah, sorry about the audio going out. Not sure what I said here. All right, so that's our first piece of ideal edge. Um, what I did here was I used Type Bond number three. It's the best glue you can buy from Home Depot. 
it's just wood glue and you glue both sides you glue this ideal edge and then you glue your countertop edge and kind of smush them together you can see my 22.5 right there and this is the seam that you end up with and you use scotch tape to kind of tape it flush with the top try to squeeze all the glue out and then wipe it off when you're done and that's how you install ideal edge so now we're gonna work on this island here Whew. So here we are, all complete. The edge is all taped up. And as you can see, there's definite seam to the top here. Uh, as we go around, we just want to make sure we do the best we can with tight corners. And I might need to put some more tape on that one before the glue sets up. But yeah, I just finished installing it. Um, actually, didn't order enough countertop ideal edge. Um, initially this island was supposed to be a lot bigger than, or I mean a lot smaller than we made it, so um, had to make it work by splicing a couple pieces together on that back edge where you didn't see it as much. Um, if we're not happy with it, I'll order some more, but it took two months for the stuff to get here, so trying to make it work. Here's the part where we puttied the seam, and it's definitely a lot better than um, the island over here as you can tell there's a little bit of a black seam everywhere not really sure what I said here <laughs> All right guys, so my audio is still not working. I uh, just wanted to wrap this video up and show you guys around the kitchen. Now that all the countertops are done and we puttied all the ideal edge, um, you can see up close, it definitely looks a lot better with the putty in there. 
than it did before we'd puttied. And after you putty this edge, um, or before you putty, you want to make sure you file this nice and smooth, just in case you're slightly higher than the countertop. And then you want to putty everything. After it's putty, just kind of wipe it with a nice damp rag. Try not to remove the putty. You got a little crazy here and removed a little too much, but it's uh, turning out pretty good. This is where we had our seam because I ran out of material. It doesn't look too bad. Um, if we're not happy with it later, we'll get a new piece. But for the most part, considering that we didn't spend $10,000 on marble, uh, we're pretty satisfied with the finished product. Um, the Ideal Edge makes it look way nicer than not doing Ideal Edge. Um, the underside's just kind of already pre-filed down so it's not too sharp so you want to make sure you go around and use a file and kind of dull down all the sharp edges so you don't get hurt uh, and you can just kind of feel around with your hand and make sure you get all that taken care of um, other than that it's uh, been a fun project we're looking forward to getting a lot of years out of these countertops Here's where I haven't done the drywall yet, but I just kind of caulked that little gap there just to see what it would look like before mud. So this is it. We're all done here. I've um, got a lot more projects to do on this house. We've still got to do some drywall patching, some tile backsplash, but we're just about done with the kitchen. It's kind of hard to live in your house and remodel and do things in the right correct order so we're definitely trying to live in this remodel and, and work around living and trying to make this look how we want it to look so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video stay tuned for more and uh, definitely consider doing for mica countertops in the future